Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Sean. And I'm Brian Moss. Sean, japanbookhunter.com. We're taking a look at Goseki Kojima artwork uh, during the Kashihon era, which is rental manga. Uh, he is the artist of Lone Wolf and Cub, and this is some stuff that he did uh, significantly before hooking up with uh, Kozu- Kazuo Koike. Yes. What uh, What is the era of the uh, rental manga, Sean? So from the late 50s to the mid 60s, the rental book and rental manga scene was really big. It was booming. So for, you know, 30 yen, 40 yen, you could rent a book, take it home and read it, and then bring it back to the shop. And because of that, they made them, you know, rental quality. So you got better color, you got heavier stock paper, better binding than you would get from the stuff that you would get at the at the bookstores for sale. Plus, of course, during that time, it was just post-war. People, kids didn't have money. So this made manga accessible, early manga accessible to the masses. Yeah, and all the all the big guys started out doing uh, rental manga. I know, I know Te- Tezuka, like the Treasure Island book that sort of gained him his initial prominence. I think that was a rental manga. Yep. And Kojima was, I believe, he was an assistant to Sanpei Shirado uh, during Kam- Kamui, and this is very close to that kind of style. In the 80s, when Viz got some version of Kamui, Mm -hmm. it was closer to Kojima-like artwork than the Gero early kind of cartoony stuff. So Mm. so the way that they both influenced each other is is an interesting little phenomenon. Yeah, so when... uh... When Kojima was working as a rental manga doing the Kashihon era stuff, he wasn't even doing like the the hyper violent stuff. He was doing romance, right. the samurai romance. And then he left, joined uh, Shirato, was doing the inking, like coloring and brushwork for him. It seems mm-hmm. my understanding. And then that must have rubbed off on him because then you go from which because you know if people don't know Kamui Den is very political right. and it's violent. And it was something just completely new at the time. It was came out around the time of just before the student movements. So people were not happy with the Japanese government. You know, students were up in a, you know, felt some anxiety, angst against the government and authority. And then next thing you know, you have Lone Wolf and Cub. This, uh, the, the, the printing is uh, exquisite uh, on, on this material. That, that's for sure. The videos are brought to you by the books that we make, and 2023 was and is a big year. 2024 is going to be just the same. The Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is out there. About 75% of this print run has uh, been accounted for, so you guys have about 25% left of our, our stock to go. Scoop up that book if you see it. It's going to make an excellent gift. The X-Men Grand Design Trilogy comes out uh, November 14th. It collects all of my X-Men Grand Design works inside of one nice, handy, uh, soft cover. Scoop that up. There are three volumes of Red Room that are uh, completed. Two of them are out on the stands right now, the Antisocial Network and Trigger Warnings. But coming to you in early 2024 is Red Room Crypto Killers with dozens of pages of extra features and commentary in the back. Street Angel Princess of Poverty is coming to you at the end of November. Uh, It is a companion piece to Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive. Uh, You get both of these books. You have all of Jimmy's uh, Street Angel comics to date. He's been self-publishing, and here you have True Crime Funnies, the black and white zine, 1986 zine. Go to Jimmy's website. Uh, He might be sold out right at the moment, but uh, you never know. He, He might have fresh stock, depending on when you're watching this video. And uh, Hulk Grand Design is Jimmy's contribution to the Grand Design mythology that we have created for Marvel Comics. Now that we're done paying the bills, let's get back to the video. You go out on the hunt often. I can't imagine that uh, a book that was read by hundreds, maybe thousands of people, I I can't imagine you find those in the greatest condition. These are pretty spectacular. Yeah, usually the insides are decent condition, mm-hmm. although you do see some doodles here and there by some oh, kid that, <laughs> that rented them. That makes it priceless to me. Yeah, yeah, it adds character to it. But the, the covers, it's hard to find them in good condition with like the, their covers on them. So a lot of times the covers are tattered or just completely missing. And um, then you also have popular series like uh, Kaidan, the horror series that are really sought after. Mm-hmm. So finding those in good condition you're gonna pay a pr- pretty penny you're gonna pay over a hundred dollars for any of those you know one to three hundred dollars for one of those so do you 
trade in uh, Cashiho? And, uh, like, do you have a nice stack of those that uh, are available to customers on the website? Yeah, it's, so it's what I'll do is I'll get affordable ones that are maybe by some lesser known mangaka of the day it's for people that want it as like a novelty. And then I'll find the ones with the awesome covers. And then, of course, I'm always searching for the ones by the big hitters, the Umez, the Saito Takao, the Kojimas. And those ones, of course, are like highly sought after. Would you say that you found one that you were even surprised by? Um, you know, I, of course, the, the Kojima Goseki stuff, um, anytime I can find some Tezuka at a reasonable price. Mm. Right. Because if you go to, like, the big Mandarake or one of these big sellers... Those, those are the are, case books. Yeah, yeah like those are showcase. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're in the glass case. They're 300,000 yen. Right. Exactly, exactly. So if I can, whenever I find something like that affordable in the wild... And then there is also some... Once in a while, you'll find some that's a famous mangaka, but a lesser-known title, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, you can find them affordable, under 100 bucks. but... Brian Moss, doesn't this printing look like uh, lithography? Yeah, I was going to say that, because it's with these, it's always consistent with the coloring, so you know that it's like a consistent palette, but it has those painterly textures to it, almost like a screen printing. Right, yeah. Or like a um, Rizzo, almost. Exactly, you know? it's, it's not traditional uh, yeah. mechanical separations that, mm -hmm. that were done I'm, in America at this time. Totally, I would be curious of like the saturation, you know, because these are color, like 50, right? yeah, 50, 60 years old now, so imagine how vivid these would be at the time. Yeah, they. I mean, most stuff that you get like in post rental manga from like the the late sixties, it is so faded. Like right. the ink doesn't really you know stick very well, and it's printed on like really poor quality uh, newsprint. Mm -hmm. But you get these; these still hold their color really well. Nice. Yeah, it's really sweet. Uh, from the limited knowledge that I have, just from reading Tatsumi's A Drifting Life and a couple of other uh, comics about comics uh, from Japan, the rental manga. These things were drawn speedy. I I know that he did that one. It's called like a black black winter or something. Yeah, black like that. winter exactly. It, I think he did that in a month, like something like 128 pages in a month. Uh, so these things were drawn with a quickness. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the early he the early Hibari and Subame, which was would become Hibari, that they had one. And Hibari, where, Hibari is the company, right? Yeah, it's the company. Yeah, Sorry, it's, no the, it's a publishing company. Mm -hmm. And then they changed their names a couple times, but they had one warehouse space where they kept stock, and they had just all of the manga costs shoved in on the third floor or the fourth floor I read once. And so then you have this mixing of all these, like, legends that had worked together, and once in a while you'll come across, like, in an, an old picture in Nagato magazine, and it's like... Tatsumi, Goseki, Mizuki Shigeru, like all of them just standing there together for like a group photo because they were working in the same office. I, I, I think <laughs> I think in A Drifting Life, I think Tatsumi draws that photo. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like the equivalent to the Marvel bullpen. <laughs> exactly, something like that. Right? Yeah. The beauty of looking through this is I see the germs of future Kojima in this. You know, it's there. He's He's... It's, it's sort of unmistakable in a lot right. of ways, man. So it's a big part of my collecting syndrome is uh, collecting the entire body of work of a cartoonist that I like. I like to see the early period. I like to see the sort of uh, grand finale of their careers. Uh, everybody knows the sweet spots. So this is key for me. I, I, I'm quite sure. Is this the one that like I, I, I called dibs on? I think I think so. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think this is the one that I had stashed in my personal stash in the right, back. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this is just, this stuff is just such a revelation. A, bi a big part of us coming out on the manga quest is educational purposes, mm. and we we don't know what we don't know. So happening upon stuff like this is uh, incredibly important. And how about this, man? Like right. they they're just you know Western civilization amongst the the samurai and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was probably set around the time of the Meiji Restoration. Mm -hmm. So you, the samurai class were, like, ending, right. and then, you know, you had modernism coming in, you know, horse and wagons and uh, suits, western suits. suits. Yeah, you saw some dudes looking, looking, looking fly in some threads. I mean, just that image is staggering, dude, to see, like, the suits amongst the, like, right, traditional the garment. Sean, thank you so much, man. Uh, do you have some some of this uh, Cashew Home stuff on uh, 
on the website as we speak. And if you do, direct the people to uh, to to the website and maybe some titles that are in kind. So go over to japanbookhunter.com. You can search under manga. You can search by tag. You can search by by manga con name and uh, just start digging through. And I do tag all of these old ones, kashi hon or rental manga. So pop that in the search and they should pop up for you. Yo, Brian Moss, man, tell the people where they could get some of your comics. For sure. If you hit my Instagram or my Etsy, it's going to be Strange Things Moss, all one word, or it's Brian Christopher Moss on Instagram, and then you can just inbox me there, and I can direct you or hook you up directly. Okay, favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can let you know what new videos are uh, available. We are a daily YouTube channel with more than 1,500 videos in our filmography, and there's a good chance we talked about some of your favorite comics. I encourage you to hit the magnifying glass on the front page of the Kayfabe YouTube channel, search for your favorite titles, and uh, check out those episodes. If, by chance, we did not talk about your favorite comics on the channel yet, you have to let us know. Do, the, do so in the comments. Let us know what those comics are, and we will push those comics a little bit higher on our to-read pile. Jimmy and I are going to be at Big Apple Comic Con uh, come December 16th. It's been years since we've been to the Big Apple, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys. So, so please come through and bring your comics that we have yet to sign. We have a Patreon, and on the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon... Uh, the King Kayfabers get all the videos before anybody else, and uh, w when the internet cooperates, they are hanging out with us in a live stream recording session as we uh, make these episodes, mitigates the Kayfabe effect. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make, and Before You is a pretty good sample of our bibliography, but we'll get into the nitty gritty. Jimmy, to let the people know what you got coming out soon. My next release is Street Angel, Princess of Poverty from Image Comics. This will be out in late November in time for a holiday gift for the uh, action comic, superhero comic lover in your life. And Street Angel, Princess of Poverty collects all the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, also available from Image. And uh, get both books, it'll complete your collection. I have been self-publishing lately. True Crime Funnies number one is available on jimrug.com along with BW and 1986 zine. And if they are sold out there, you can still read them on patreon.com slash jimrug. And my contribution to the grand design history is the Hulk, which is available in limited quantities because it is sold out at the uh, distribution level. So if you haven't added Hulk grand design to your collection yet, you need to pick that up next time you hit the comic shop. Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is my big one for 2023, and uh, it is going fast, man. There's more than uh, probably 75% of this print run is gone, and stores have been re-upping. It was the number one reordered book on, on Comicron, uh, so thank you guys so much. Thanks to stores for uh, for supporting the book, but if you even have any thought that, you're, that you want this or you want to get it as a gift, make sure you scoop it up uh, right away. Uh, it's the best book I've made to date, 500 plus pages. 10-year anniversary of Hip Hop Family Tree, 50th anniversary of the culture. Scoop it up. Uh, not the last holiday release I'm going to have. Uh, coming November 14th is the X-Men Grand Design trade paperback, collecting all of my X-Men Grand Design works. Uh, a couple volumes of that, that is out of print uh, as we speak, so make sure uh, if you are missing out on your uh, X-Men Grand Design, scoop that up. You'll get it all in one. And there is a trilogy of horror comics that I have made under the Red Room umbrella, Anti-Social Network, Trigger Warnings, and coming in January is this trade paperback right here called Crypto Killers, which uh, collects my 2023 season of Red Room comics with a bunch of extras. The books are the most important part of keeping cartoonist kayfabe solvent and uh, functional. But there are some other ways to support the channel. Jimmy, let the people know. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. All good ways to support the channel. Give them those final merchandise, Jimmy, and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.